Welcome back to the Monolith Film Podcast with me, Nick Gillum, and we burn as always. How's it going? Pretty good, you? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, watching a lot of flicks these uh, these quarantine podcast days. We're we're flying through them now. It's nice. I like it. Uh, today we're doing another uh, little Herzog one to go with our little Herzog uh, playlist there, Gary, The Wrath of God. Uh, this was your first time checking it out, Lee? Yes, this was my first time checking it out. A little different than the other two we watched? Um, yeah, but I don't know. They all same like Herzog. Name. Yeah, but yeah. English, this one, too. A Gary? Yeah. No. You watched it in German? Yeah. Okay, so the lips must have been completely off. Didn't notice. Oh, really? Oh, I this, thought this is was, fun. okay. Are they supposed to be? Are they supposed to be speaking in English? Uh, there. Well, it was filmed in like that kind of '70s style where the actors would talk in their own languages, like regardless, and then oh, okay. they would dub everything after. Um, I watched it on Amazon Prime. Okay, and it's. In German with English subtitles by default. Oh, well, that's very interesting. I watched it on Tubi, and it's in English, but the English uh, audio track on the Tubi version is fucking ten times better than the special Blu-ray edition I have. Oh yeah, yeah. The Blu-ray edition I have sucks. Interesting. Like the sound is terrible. It's all unmixed and sounds mono almost. I hate the sound in this movie. Weird. It sounded good on on Prime. That's very interesting. I'll have to check it out then because I, I yeah. love the aesthetics of this movie, but the sound annoys me so much. Yeah, I don't know. I'd notice that. Okay, well, I'm I'm glad then you you had a better experience than uh, than I did every time I watched this movie. Oh, there you go. Uh, for <laughs> everyone who doesn't have Prime and doesn't feel like using Tubi, it's on YouTube. Oh, is it really? Okay. Yeah, there's at least I saw like five different versions. videos that's just yeah. a full movie okay well that's a fact that that's easy then to get around is i'm sure each one too has like a different audio track almost probably now that i now that i'm learning about this it's kind of fun on that blu-ray thing i have it has like english one english two and german one or two or whatever and it's depending weird. on which ones you watch the lips sync up differently which is kind of funny so you can tell who's talking german and who's talking in english Oh, uh, that is pretty funny. I think most of them are in English, though. Like, 80% of the people talk in English in the movie. Interesting. Because I thought the weirdest part to me was mm. just that they weren't speaking Spanish. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and that the main <laughs> guy's blonde and just the German guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's the only blonde guy in the whole movie. Yeah. Some Spaniards they are. Yeah, well, they sounded it. Um, I had no idea this was going to be about fucking El Dorado. Yeah. Some, yeah, uh, it caught me off guard. Goofy conquistadors. Yeah. Oh, should we uh, describe it for the yeah, for the people listening? It's uh, some conquistadors go into the uh, Peruvian uh, jungle, and uh, they're led astray by their Indian slaves who tell them about the uh, legendary golden city of El Dorado, which is just a lie to get the soldiers to go into a swamp and F off. And uh, they kind of go mad in the swamps. Uh, there's a mutiny, a usurping officer named Gary takes command, and uh, they all die in the end. All right, there you go. It's a quick one, too. Easy enough. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, the usual kind of themes of uh, madness and uh, isolation and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, I, I find that also a lot of... Uh, I mean, anytime there's a story about El Dorado, there's always at least something to be said about Creed. Yeah. Oh, and if you're Spanish, uh, Conquistador, I guess that's uh, extra also. <laughs> I found, um, I mean, that the tagline implies the connection, but it's almost uh, like a direct adaptation of uh, Heart of Darkness. Yeah, pretty well, uh, pretty so. I guess any kind of going into the unknown lands, you know, kind of fall in that same category, that kind of on a mission into the wilderness. Yeah. Direct things? Because I, I don't really remember Heart of Darkness that much. I mean, the, the they're both journeying by river. Yeah. They're both on some sort of 
I think they're on a like legit boat in Heart of Darkness, not some. Yeah. Aren't they going to the Congo to find the general or something or find somebody? Yeah, they're going to a trading post in the Congo. Okay. Any um, time. I uh, I skimmed through that book when we were uh, told to read it, I think, and uh, I uh, I instead watched uh, Apocalypse Now as my yeah. uh, my reference for it. So I'm uh, I'm foggy on the original. Um. Yeah. I mean, like you said, any any story about going into the jungle is going to be an adaptation of Heart of Darkness inevitably yeah. at this point. But I know, uh, who did Apocalypse Now? Coppola or whatever? Yeah, Coppola. Coppola? Yeah. Um, He's the three good movies. He cited a Gary the Wrath of God directly as an influence, right? Oh, did he? I didn't know that. I think he did, yeah. Oh, that's fun. I guess so. They all kind of go wild and it's kind of surreal at the end. (laughs) They do kind of... uh, Well, what's the thing in Apocalypse Now? They kind of devolve themselves from the uh kind of modern vietnam soldier into like this woodsman in tribal times by the end and they, they kind of do a similar progression in this movie too where you kind of start off as royalty uh or soldiers and royal guard kind of people and then at the end they're all muddy uh, what struck me um as being like the most potent in terms of related to heart of darkness yeah uh was the kind of subtle commentary on colonialism mm-hmm Fucking the opening scene is absolutely stunning. I love those little title credits with the foggy mountain and everything. Yeah, those are insane. That is fantastic. That um, this whole this whole movie is filmed on location, right? Yeah, right in the Amazon on the river. That's pretty nuts. Yeah, this one is the the movie I always cite whenever people are like uh, they say, "Oh, I'm fucking having a hard time. I don't know what to do." And I always uh, give them the anecdote or Herzog's anecdote where. Uh, he would almost rewrite the whole script every morning just because of different weather conditions and what had happened the day before. And then one day they're filming on the river and then the next day it goes up 10 feet, floods the rafts and everything and ruins the whole shooting set. And he just wrote it into the movie that it flooded that day and they just kept going. Oh, so the river actually flooded them on set? Yeah, on set. They didn't know. They went to, went to bed or whatever. And the next day they came to shoot and the fucking everything was ruined. They said, oh, we'll just funny. roll with it, keep writing. And they, they just did that throughout, just kept writing, redoing everything and coming up with the story as they went. Yeah, there's a, there's a few times uh, Herzog is filming like each character individually right after the flood. Yeah. And they make eye contact with the camera and it's almost like they weren't, they hadn't started filming yet. Herzog yeah. was just filming them be pissed off about the set in general and just worked with the movie. Yeah, I'm sure tons of the shots of just the people being bored and annoyed on the raft and stuff are all just the camera guy just turning on the camera. The the, the raft thing is insane to me because they must have built that raft by hand and Herzog must have actually gotten on that raft with his camera. Yeah, I don't think I would have sent a, like a film camera crew with the sound, well, there was no sound guy, but all the, the full camera assistant, director, everybody onto this fucking little raft they built with all the actors on a horse. Yeah, that was, that was so fucking stupid. <laughs> it was hard enough for the horse to walk in the jungle. Why are they even bringing it? Yeah, well, I that mean, was so why fucking they funny. eat it right away? They what? Why wouldn't they eat it right away? They're eating yeah. fucking grass in between they, the raft. That part grosses me out. Um, I, I wonder if that's real or not. There's like moss in between the big beams of this raft and some starving soldiers are just eating this grass out like, algae <laughs> so much fucking parasites and everything in that water <laughs> i would never fucking put my mouth and just suck amazon fucking river water <laughs> ridiculous yep i thought the same thing i when he started drinking the water at first i was like that's gross why would he drink from the one spot that's obviously dirty yeah <laughs> and then he starts eating the muck instead yeah <laughs> it's like well i guess everything's dirty <laughs> yeah uh, um one thing in that opening that title credits there uh when we're on the the foggy mountain the uh like everything was supposed to be kind of ad-libbed as they went like some of the dialogue was written but a lot of it was more uh, 
in this scene, you guys are supposed to uh, get mad at each other or something, you know, and they kind of just feel through the motions. But uh, that chicken, uh, the chickens falling off the mountain in the first scene. Yeah. I, that, like those are real chickens really dying, falling off the mountain. I assume so. And uh, the camera seems suspiciously perfectly set up and ready to zoom in on these chickens falling. So I, I think some of it is designed. Well, I mean, it could have also just been in the spur of the moment. Like, Herzog could have just yelled, hey, throw that chicken. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? It's also a good way to get away from uh, some animal, animal abuse kind of stuff. You go, fuck, we're doing a documentary style. They just fell. Yeah. <laughs> filming what happened. They fucking fell down. <laughs> you think they actually, you think they got the horse back? I don't know. That thing was fucking that horse. I felt bad for that horse. That was getting yeah. Me too. <laughs> throw it off. The fucking thing's leg is up in the air. It's staff in the water. <laughs> yeah, in- I have a I have a feeling. Uh, they actually just ditched that horse in the jungle. Yeah. Well, you know what? This is seventy one or something. This movie. Seventy two. Seventy two. Who gives a fuck in seventy two? <laughs> yeah. I mean. Uh, at least here on the podcast, we're pretty familiar with animal abuse, considering our debut. Yeah, well, we've been a steady flow of it throughout our picks. <laughs> not that we agree with it. <laughs> no, of course not. But if it's documentary style, might as well. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I mean, if it happens, film it, I guess. You said you, uh, visually you love this movie? Oh, yeah, I just love the look of it. Nice kind of four three and then you have the everyone's in costume i love costume movies but yeah most, most of them i find are just like terribly done like too studio done like okay i, I like them like the kind of period pieces where you're, it feels like you're in the period or something uh what would you say like uh you kind of get the idea through the visuals or through the aesthetics, what it was like to live there, even if it's not a direct representation of what it actually was, you kind of get the feeling of what it was like then. Yeah. So like, yeah. I mean, this movie definitely feels like Herzog fucking time traveled. Yeah. It feels muddy and gross and grimy and yeah. all these guys are fucking <laughs> these ripped up uniforms and stuff. I, and I love the light leaking in too, into the lens where you kind of, takes the color out a bit, kind of washes out a bit of the color, and then the camera guy has to readjust and almost falls over sometimes. And I love the the visceral walking around right the right in your body kind of feel of this the filming of it or the look of it. I I get I like that too. I, I get all that. Mm. Um but I found like half of it boring. Oh yeah it's a boring movie yeah. Like it gets old fucking quick like yeah. when they that when they first uh when one of their rafts collapses for, and then it floods and shit and they're not sure yeah. what to do and they elect a new emperor mm-hmm. that whole scene when they're on that shore yeah that entire section is just Too awful old. yeah and for me i found it even worse because the fucking dialogue's off so the yeah. tracks don't line up and I, I don't want to hear the guys talk anyways in their stupid not Spanish accents. I just want to kind of see some action happening. Yeah. There's a, like uh, the convo between, I don't know, is she a princess, a queen? Who's that fucking girl in the blue dress? Oh, that was uh, like the, uh, the guy's wife, the, the guy, the original guy who was leading the mission there. Okay. The guy who's kind of uh, maimed and kind of lies down for the rest of the movie and they send him in the woods at the end on a canoe. Yeah. That guy, that's right. his wife. I forget his name. A um, or something. Right. So the, the when the girl in the blue... Right, because he gets put into fake prison or whatever. Yeah. And then uh, his wife talks to the monk mm-hmm. or the priest or whatever. Yeah. That shot I liked and the trial I liked. Yeah, but like them, they could have been a third of the length, though. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Big time. It, I was kind of is like Herzog. He's not bothered with the kind of time restraints of movies and stuff. Like he'll have a three-hour one or a forty-five-minute one. He, he doesn't care the length of things. And this one, it's kind of annoying. It's right on the hour thirty. It could be an hour kind of thing. And for Herzog, yeah. 
who doesn't Definitely. care about that stuff. You you shouldn't. I don't know. He, he could have edited a lot of this out, and you know, like people, are, oh well, they're they're trying to show the boring stuff to make you feel what they're feeling too. But I mean, you get the idea, no matter what. Yeah, I kind of have a feeling. Um, like Herzog didn't cut anything. Like everything that's in the movie is the only thing he filmed. It feels like it almost. Yeah, it feels like every time he turned the camera on, it was, it was going in the movie. Yeah. And almost some cuts are too long, too, where you see the camera guy kind of fall down and then it cuts to something else. And <laughs> those are fun ones. It's a lot of uh, dragging on, though. Yeah, definitely. Uh, what else do I have written here? Oh, the music is the same uh, same uh, German band we've been hearing so far in uh, all his other movies. Popol Paul Vu. Yeah. Paul Vu. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> we hear that again how do, how do you like this uh soundtrack i i quite like the music yeah i like it too yeah especially during that opening sequence it's very like mystical and fantastic mm. the so, uh captures the descent from the hills very nicely mm -hmm. some weird almost uh choir sounding is the uh is the pan flute player in the band as well <laughs> I don't think so, but that was my, that was my fucking favorite part, dude. <laughs> yeah, I loved it. I have a note here that just says the pan flute is awesome. It's such a funny cut just to a good square of a Gary all annoyed and this dumb pan flutist just playing. <laughs> just rocking out, too. Really getting into it. <laughs> I love that stuff. Fucking funny. Good dress up, too. I like the costumes in it. They're, they're well set, the costumes. Um. Uh, Gary's played by Klaus Kinski. Yes, he's in like all of his movies. Yeah, this uh, this would be the first uh one they did together. This is the first one, and Kinski came back for more. Let me tell you some behind the scenes stuff, uh, if you don't mind. That's pretty funny. Go for it. Um, this is stuff. Uh, they have a movie kind of that Herzog made. I think in the 90s, called My Best Fiend instead of Friend. Okay. About him and Klaus Kinski's relationship and uh, how they kind of they hated each other on set and like loved each other afterwards kind of relationship. Okay. And uh, from what I remember of uh, that section, because they made five movies together and they successively get worse as you go. <laughs> like the last movie, Cobra Verde, is absolute garbage. <laughs> I hate that fucking movie. It sucks. But this first movie I like quite a bit. And he's got some good ones in the middle. Nosferatu and Wojciech are good ones. But yeah. uh, this one here, he uh, Herzog kind of uh, knew of this actor who was kind of touring Germany playing uh, Jesus in a play. I'm not sure what the play was, but it was almost a one man show where Klaus Kinski uh, played Jesus and just argued with the audience and yelled at them and called them filthy dogs and threw things at them and stuff and people would just yell at him he'd like have a microphone in the audience and he'd just get in fucking yelling matches and just scream at the audience nice and some of the clips of him are just him dressed as Jesus storming around the stage jumping up and down and just yelling <laughs> poppy lung over these people you fucking idiots and so just yelling at them and uh Herzog said hey this guy's good so uh he, he checked out some of his stuff and um, turns out that um, Kinski had nowhere to live or something. And it ended up that Klaus Kinski was living with Herzog's parents as like a renter in his room. So that's kind of how Herzog and Kinski got together and then started making this movie. The buddy was like renting his parents' house. Jesus. So it's a fun little connection they had together. And uh, on set and stuff, there's some fun fun clips of it where um Herzog would like wake up and stuff and Kinski would have like a knife at his throat and stuff while he's trying to wake up and things and saying like don't fuck with me today or I'll fucking kill you and stuff and uh, like he, he was so nuts Kinski that he would get in fights with everybody like the cameraman and stuff and say I'm a fucking actor I've worked with this guy you don't know fucking anything and he started yelling that Herzog would have to take a gun out that they had to uh, just in case wild animals came or something and he'd point the gun at Kinski and say, do the fucking scene or I'll shoot you. <laughs> he 
he'd be directing from behind the camera and pointing the gun at Kinski as he's acting so that he didn't fuck around. <laughs> and he came back for more. Four more times, and they loved Jesus. each other. But can you imagine that? You wake up with a knife to your throat, and you go, fuck this stupid actor. I'm going to shoot this guy all day. And <laughs> <laughs> all day. This fucking guy. And that's, abs- that's fucking insane. Another fun little behind-the-scenes thing is that Herzog wrote the script in two days uh, on a trip with his soccer team to uh, wherever they were going. And they won the soccer match, got completely drunk that night, and Herzog puked all over the script. And then he threw out the pages the next morning that had puke on them and just kept the script as it was. Nice. So he's just missing parts of it. Because who gives a fuck? <laughs> so those are my fun behind-the-scenes stuff. Jesus. What else do we have here? <laughs> um, oh, another fun one. Uh, you know the scene where they end up at the village and uh, like they're sacking the village, they end up burning it and they find bananas and food and stuff. Yeah. Uh, there's a shot where a Gary runs up and he goes, hey, you dogs, you look for Indians, don't eat the food. And he hits one guy in the head with the sword. Yeah. Uh, he actually hit the actor with the sword and the helmets are just like aluminum, like set pieces, but the swords were real, like iron or something. And the guy fucking had a concussion and a big scar on his head and everything. <laughs> And uh, if he didn't have the helmet, they said uh, Kinski would have bashed his head in. <laughs> so this is what the kind of set was when you're filming. Fuck, man. If that happened today, he would have gotten fucking... Production would have been shut down so fucking fast. I think so. Well, I guess people just didn't care back then. You're in the jungle filming, and uh, I don't know. People are just going nuts. Yeah, well, now, I mean, you can't do much without a fucking legal team. Mm. And we got Kinski throwing monkeys around and stuff and finding That was so funny. I like that little end scene with the little monkey. I say keep the first 10 minutes and like the last 20 minutes and give us maybe 15 in the middle and I'm happy with that movie. Yeah, I agree with that. I I was uh, kind of hoping Kinski would just bite one of the monkeys' heads off, if I'm being honest. (laughs) It would have been completely real. (laughs) Yeah, I was half expecting that to happen considering his descent into madness. I was like just waiting for that. Yeah. Ready just to the fucking it. chomp. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it happening. That'd be fantastic. What else? What did you think of the uh, the last shot here? If you want to jump around a bit to that, the raft shot. Because I watched this movie with my uh, dad uh, maybe a couple of years ago. And he said he liked the movie, but the very last shot ruined it for him. And it's the shot where like, there's a camera boat doing circles around the raft. But he said his problem with the shot was in the background, you can see the wake from the camera boat going around. And he said that ruined the entire movie for him. Okay, hold up. I don't remember what you're talking about. It's like uh, right after Gary does his speech where he says he's going to marry his daughter and take over all of South America, become the, the new emperor of South America. The final shot in the movie is kind of starts far upriver and it's on another boat. Okay, yeah. And then that boat kind of zooms toward the raft, and then they just do circles around the raft. Right. So you just get a few 360s. But in the background, in the far background, you can see the kind of waves made by this camera boat. And my dad said that that threw him so off that the whole movie was ruined for him. Um, Did that bother Yeah, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, I didn't really notice either, so... Rewatching it now, I still don't really notice it. F off then, dad. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, I can see it because I'm looking for it. Yeah. But at I... The moment, you didn't notice anything? No, not at all. Okay, fantastic. I was worried about that one thing. I was busy looking at the fucking monkeys on the raft. <laughs> yeah, that's, I wonder how they got those monkeys on there. That's a, it's a lot of monkeys. That's like 50 monkeys. They must have been hoarding monkeys during the entire production and then just dumped them all on the raft for the last shot. Pump them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fun. I wonder what the like craft services and stuff were for a production like this. We're actually in the jungle. And I don't imagine they went out to hotels and stuff. I guess they had tents and things. And uh, what the fuck are they eating all day? Fuck uh, those bananas from that village. 
I guess so. Maybe they were the cannibals they were talking about. But oh, there you go. I mean, for all we know, like that was that village even planned? Or did they know. actually find a village that was on fire and say, "Fucking, let's go check it out." Let's go do it. <laughs> I don't know. And even the boat in the tree. I don't know what to think about that. Did they put that fucking boat in the tree just for like thirty seconds of screen time, or did they find a boat in this tree? Um, I read somewhere that that's a ref because uh, Gary is a real person. Yeah, right? yeah. Like the three main, uh, Gary, the dude they elect as emperor. Okay. A no. uh, uh, Gary, the the prisoner, and the monk were oh, real. Yeah. Figures, yeah, I think. Okay. But the the boat in the tree is actually uh from a different historical figure's diary or journal or whatever you want to call it mm. during the same period yeah where they thought they were all going crazy because they saw boats in the in the trees okay uh historians now think it's just a fucking hurricane put a bunch of boats in trees yeah like they that thought... just kind of happens sometimes yeah but they all thought they were going crazy they thought it was like rising tide or something or that they were just hallucinating um hallucinating because they were like deep in the not deep in the jungle but you deep know just too, too deep for the tide to go that high yeah that's pretty crazy though just to imagine something like a river going up even 15 feet like actually happened that's insane yeah that is insane it must have fucking flooded like, like a motherfucker downpoured upstream oh, okay. like crazy because 15 feet that's thousands of liters yeah because that's like a fucking probably a hundred foot wide river too where they were at least i mean f 15 feet sounds like an exaggeration because remember when uh our cities flooded last last spring yeah we got flooded like crazy that was i think 10 feet yeah and the water reached like the river grew by like fucking kilometers yeah I think I, I gotta agree with you on that one. Fifteen feet is way too high, but still, even five or ten feet—that's a—that's a flood. Yeah, that—that's that's insane. That's an insane amount of water. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess it could have, because there's there's the tree line, so the yeah. river might have actually stretched kilometers, and they were, you know, we just didn't see it because of the tree yeah. line. And throughout the the rest of the movie, we never see any beachable land either. It's all just kind of water into trees yeah there's just the the one when they find the village yeah but it's like more of like a cliff yeah exactly than a, than a beachable area yeah mm. so uh what did you think about uh, the kind of acting in this movie um i liked klaus he he looks absolutely insane the entire movie <laughs> yeah i think he That's... is a real insane person though yeah i well now that i like from all the back of the you know yeah when you watch his other movies too he's almost the same just character in every single one uh just a complete lunatic um it sounds like uh i don't know it sounds like the acting wasn't acting i'm feeling the same way too yeah like it kind of seems like oh, whenever herzog focuses on one of the characters who's supposed to be afraid yeah. They're actually genuinely afraid because they're stuck on a fucking raft in a river in the Amazon with a crazy fucking person. Yeah, exactly. And the director who doesn't care about anything. Yeah, who's pointing a gun at him. Yeah. <laughs> like, how tense must that just to be like, I don't know, the second camera guy pulling the focus or something? Fuck, man. <laughs> this guy got a fucking gun. This guy's got a knife going nuts. We got horses falling off this fucking raft. Yeah, I can't. I mean, the act like the the acting was good, but I can understand why now. Mm -hmm. I don't want to uh, spoil anything for future episodes if we end up doing uh, Fitzcarraldo, which is uh, another Herzog movie, very similar to this one, but that's in kind of uh, classical colonial times, like eighteen tens, kind of. Okay. And, um, it's about a, a rubber uh, magnate going into the Amazon again, uh, looking for rubber trees. He, he buys a giant plot of land and he wants to go harvest the rubber and they take a, a like a yacht almost a big big river cruiser down this amazon and the same kind of thing happens where it starts off normal and then the expedition ends with everyone going crazy almost and uh in that movie 
um, they want to bring the boat over a mountain, this, this big hill to get to the other side of the river on the other side. And uh, instead of using special effects or anything, Herzog had uh, like all these natives he had hired to be in the movie, like 200 extras were all these kind of like pygmy jungle natives. And like we see in this movie almost. And yeah. he gets them to build um, this kind of big pulley system to actually pull this big yacht over the hill and they filmed them doing it. And I don't know how many months this took for them to pull a fucking boat over. Seems like just nonsense to just have like three special effects shots. When yeah. They pulled the, an actual boat over. And I think Jesus Walter Christ. did that. Like two of the natives died or something. They were crushed underneath the boat while filming. So I think that that's another, uh, another fun kind of nihilistic Herzog filming moment. But uh, he, he incorporated that into the movie later where he shows Indians getting squished by this boat. So it all turns into art in the end, I guess. Yeah, there you go. Hey, if it's for a good cause, you know, why not? Yeah, so for me, it's going to be <laughs> in one-fifth of the box office. Do the means justify the ends when the end is a movie that only film students know about? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I picked Herzog to do as like any case study throughout going to film school. And none of the people knew any of the fucking movies I was talking about. So it was fantastic. I mean, no one I know, except for you, knows who Herzog is. I know. It's great. <laughs> Dude, I was getting A's on everything. <laughs> Just because I, I referenced about 15 movies that no one else saw. They went, oh, I guess he's right. <laughs> it was so easy. That's the absolute best. I could just picture your professors just being like, fuck, uh, I guess. Yeah, well, you know, you kind of have these, um, not peer evaluation things, but you kind of got to write a draft or something or an outline and then show it to the TA and they kind of give you pointers. Okay. I had one essay like this and I was writing it on um, some kind of Herzog as auteur kind of standard uh, essay. And I showed my outline to the uh, TA and I had my list of references and like, list of movies I was going to talk about and I think I had about 50 Herzog movies that I was going to talk about in this essay the guy was like buddy no one's seen any of these movies get two not 50 <laughs> so that was my uh my film school career <laughs> nice very nice yeah. um other than that uh overall uh how, how you feeling about everything we, we kind of talked about acting and music and everything already um what do you think is this more of a an exercise in what what you can do or what lengths you can do to film something or is this actually a, a good movie is a, i i've heard arguments going both ways people saying that kind of herzog's movies or his style are almost more like look at me look what i can do rather than making something good um yeah, that's that's an interesting stance to hold. Uh, I mean, I, I agree with it in some instances, some cases, like, I don't know, in, in that movie Fitzcarraldo, I don't think you needed to pull a boat over a fucking mountain to get the shots. But then someone made a documentary about him trying to pull the boat over, and that was a big documentary, so then... I don't know, like you were saying before, do the ends justify the means? Uh, I mean, I don't know. Is it worth it to go through all this trouble? Um, I think so. I think so. I mean, <clears throat> I don't know Herzog personally. Mm -hmm. I'll, but, get you, I'll get you in touch with him. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like the there's a whole artist trope about wanting to be remembered yeah and you know putting your name on something and having it last forever it's a way to become immortal or whatever the fucking trope is yeah i mean if herzog would have used special effects in fitzcarraldo mm -hmm. or if he would have made some fucking in-house studio uh a gary wrath of god instead yeah you know he wouldn't be who he is I think so too, and I don't think we would be talking about it either. Uh, yeah, exactly. Years later, I mean, at the very least, he would have just been known for it to be 
a director of uh, documentaries because yeah, his documentaries are good. Yeah, but oh, I don't boy. know. I think I mean I'm I think the ends do justify the means. Yeah, I mean you know it sucks that people died, but like if I get to watch it on camera, then why not? They signed up for it too. I mean uh, you could die working any job. Yeah, that's true. It just happened that this is uh, you're dying on camera. I don't think it was on camera though, but yeah, later reenacted on camera. Um, I, as far as a Gary, is concerned though, is it a good movie? I think so. I enjoyed it before I knew all this shit, mm-hmm. and I, you know, I had, I was able to enjoy and analyze it in the same way that I'm able to enjoy and analyze any other movie. Yeah. So whether it be some, you know, grandiose exercise in pushing his limits as a filmmaker or not, Mm -hmm. the movie's still coherent. Yeah. And enjoyable, I find. Yeah. I think so, too. Especially, like, the there's historical context, there's Mm -hmm. literary references. Mm -hmm. Um, There's still, despite there being not much content apart Mm -hmm. from you know, visually and actual production-wise. Yeah. There's still enough to grasp at a theme. And there's enough going on to form an opinion and yeah. to understand what the movie's opinion is. Some of these, though, I find are almost more fun to learn the behind the scenes. Yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, knowing the behind the scenes, like the movie almost parallels reality yeah. yeah it's just you know kinski is this madman trying to reach a goal uh despite everybody else and to the expense of everyone else yeah and, and here's put... herzog filming a movie in the fucking jungle yeah but he's playing the same part trying to do everything his way kind of so they're kind of beating on each other and i think the chemistry between that friction uh comes up with some good movies some bad ones later on but these first few i find are quite good the first one they did together of course yeah yeah i mean kinski's done like 200 something yeah he's got 145 on letterboxd okay but who knows what other shit he's done you know oh dude some of the stuff on 2b i think on 2b they bought some kind of archive of kinski's stuff because some of them are hilarious like, he must have gone to uh, Italy, I guess, to do some spaghetti westerns. Oh, yeah. There's about oh, yeah. 10 of them on fucking Tubi that are hilarious. There are a few very funny looking. He's always like the uh, kind of German guy settling in town and he can't fit in, so he ends up killing everybody kind of character. and. <laughs> doesn't fit at all in the world of a western but then everyone's italian and he's a german guy and they're supposed to be like cowboys and indians it's uh it's almost so bad that they're fun to watch these ones it looks like he's done a few horror movies that i wouldn't mind checking out yeah you want to do it crawl space (laughs) creature slaughter hotel schizoid oh yeah dude he was he was a b-movie star dude yeah these all sound pretty fucking cool star movie dude but uh, I guess the, the only ones people really know are this one and Fitzcarraldo pretty well. Yeah, Fitzcarraldo, I, I've known about since before I knew about Herzog. Mm-hmm. I find that so interesting because that's my least favorite of his movies, I think. I don't know why I know it because anytime I talk to someone about it, they don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Yeah, well, I think that's it's it seems like a heavily referenced movie yeah i think i only know it from references Mm -hmm. but kind of like what we were talking about though the reference of like excess and stuff yeah yeah Yeah. because i never would have guessed what the movie was about i just know there's a dude in a boat pretty much yeah but it's it's a fun watch it's got the exact same themes and the exact same tone and point as kind of 80 percent of herzog's catalog but uh I mean, it's fun enough. I, I don't like it, though. It's the same thing with the, the audio kind of stuff. Right. 
it's recorded 10 different times and who knows what language you're getting and what shots go with which language kind of thing. And uh, it's got Claudia Carnaval in it though. She's good. She's um, from the good, the bad, not the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, once a time, oh, once upon a time in uh, West or something. Yeah. She's good. Um, would you want to do Fitzcarraldo on, on the show? I mean, uh, I made a, a little spreadsheet for future things just before, um, so we can kind of go through it. I threw it on the Herzog possibilities list, but right. uh, I mean, if we're going to be talking about Herzog's catalog, I don't think it uh, does it any justice skipping that movie because it's like his most popular or his most known one. Okay. But it's my least favorite out of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think I, like, I yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna kind of talk. Um, I like the uh, the kind of subtle critique of uh, Christian conversion in these places. Yeah. yeah. Well, like when the the monk says to the princess on the beach, he says, uh, "You know, my child, for the good of our Lord, the church was always on the side of the strong." Yeah. I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> that is good. <laughs> yeah. That, uh, he's such a funny character, that priest, too, when like they're at the trial, and then the guy's wife stands up and gives this big defense, and then he goes, yes, yes, but you're excused, obviously. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love that. <laughs> we, we know you didn't think of anything, darling. <laughs> you know? It's so fucking condescending. Yeah, and it just, just cuts back to her, uh, duh, and then back to him. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's it's funny too because he's like obviously a Gary's the main character. Yeah, but this whole story is based on the journal recovered from the monk. Mm -hmm. So historically, the monk is revered as the protagonist of this expedition. Oh, okay. And he's you know a, he's a Christian monk, so obviously he's righteous and mm -hmm. he's the the good yeah. morally good character. Mm -hmm. Um. But you, you see him here for what I imagine. Uh, more true to life. Yeah, more true, exactly. You know, he's not, the second shit goes sideways, he's like, yeah, well, I mean, the only way the church has ever survived is to just pick whoever's winning at the time. Yeah, and go with so that. So I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. And he, what does he say? The, uh, the newly crowned emperor goes, oh, well, uh, wouldn't you prefer a gold cross to your silver one that you lost? And he goes, oh, well, fuck, yeah. Yeah, he's like, yeah, good call. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> yes, you're right there. And then he's got a sword later on when they're in battle. So, I mean, yeah, he's doing whatever he can to survive. And even uh, later when, they, when those two natives pull up on their uh, canoe, yeah, he, he instantly starts trying to convert them. <laughs> yeah. They How clearly do don't that? speak whatever language he's speaking. Yeah. <laughs> and he, he calls it blasphemy because they don't understand him. Yeah. Doesn't he get them killed too? Yeah. That's fun. <laughs> yeah. He kills them for blasphemy because uh, he said, he gave them the Bible and said, this is the word of God. Do you understand the word of God? And the guy and he goes, translated it and he's like, I don't hear anything. Yeah. Kill these guys. <laughs> <laughs> and his wife's droopy tits. The, yeah, uh, yeah I, mean, I think the monk is my favorite character. That was almost like it really was, though, in those kind of conquistador times. Wouldn't they go, like, raid a city or something, convert everyone just so they could kill them? Yeah, pretty much. Fair enough, I guess. Yeah, it was kill, convert everyone and kill whoever doesn't yeah. agree with you, but when they speak a different language, it's like, uh, kill them all. Yeah. Kind of a good way to justify stealing all the gold, too. Yeah, that's true. I was wondering, too, they kept uh, talking about, like, oh, there's no food, we're going to die. But don't worry, we'll have gold soon. <laughs> yeah. So what, are you going to eat gold? Well, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> they didn't really have a leaving the jungle option, though. Well, near the end, Gary was like, we'll make it to the Atlantic, yeah. and then we'll go and take Mexico from Spain. Mm -hmm. And that was a Gary's real plan, and a Gary in real life actually made it to the Atlantic. Oh, did he really? 
yeah, he made it to um, some island off the coast. Wow. And then his crew mutinied and killed him. Wow, that's pretty crazy. I don't know anything of the real uh, the real history of it. Yeah, he, he actually did make it out of the jungle. That's cool. So he was a conquistador in the jungle and then mutated. Yeah, the, uh, pretty much the whole story is true. Oh, wow. That's fun. More or less, you know? Yeah, very cool. Up until the end, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Like, there was actually a larger crew, and then they set, they let some of them go to find El Dorado while the other ones waited. And wow. They that... mutinied, elected a new emperor. Like, all that shit happened, apparently. That's pretty awesome. Even, yeah, like I said, even the boat and the tree. Yeah. Just happened to a different historical figure, but it's still, you know, historical. That's kind of fun. I even find, like, through all the fiction and surreal surrealism, surreality, I don't know if that's a word, but um, you, you still get the feeling of this kind of lived past in the movie. Like, it feels like you're experiencing kind of real things, but maybe slightly metaphor or a little allegory, but it, it's real enough. It'll, you'll learn something at least. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I think without uh, the comparison to Heart of Darkness, um, this movie really does just feel like fucking time travel. Mm-hmm. Like Herzog just said, you know, let's make a movie about these historical figures and let's just uh, do it as authentically as possible. I, I really enjoy movies like like this. They're not gigantic budget movies, but they're kind of low budget. They kind of going with it to get a different feel to it. Like if we watched the same thing, but it was like Gladiator or something. Like, I'm sure Gladiator has some events that are, or even Spartacus, which is supposed to be historically accurate. Like, I'm positive Spartacus didn't look like Kirk Douglas in a little robe with his big muscles running around and, you know, the way it shows in the movie. But this kind of thing, I can see, I can see some guy in a ratty purple blouse running through the jungle full of mud and stuff. Seems real enough. Yeah. Yeah. Just from aesthetics, like, I, I, I like the look and feel of it. Yeah, I, I think, uh, like I mentioned before, like the movie's authenticity, mm-hmm. it's it it just adds to the whole atmosphere of the movie. Yeah. It's too bad that, I don't know, I think Herzog has bigger budgets now and people know him and I guess some actors want to work with him and stuff that his movies have really gone downhill. What has he done recently? He did a movie with Christian Bale. Uh, he did, did he? Yeah, a few movies with... Um, I forget the guy's name now, but there's quite a few... Like, he's almost transitioned completely into documentary now. Yeah, most of his stuff is documentary. Which are good. I like the documentaries. I mean, Into the Inferno is one of my favorite documentaries. Yeah, I just That's... watched that the other day. That's awesome. I love it. The way he... Uh... He he treats the scientists studying the volcano. Yeah. The same as he treats the natives worshiping the volcano. Yeah. It's well, every, everything's girl. mystical, magical. Yeah. I love it. Really cool. Yeah, I like the kind of. It's not really myth or folklore that he's kind of working with, but it's almost some kind of magical nature of things that it happens in Herzog movies, where you, it looks like a real thing, but you kind of feel. Like you're seeing a different world almost. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's so like immersive mm-hmm. while still having such an amount of distance that it feels completely weird and bizarre. Yeah. And his new fiction movies have completely lost that, I think. Get another movie with Nick Cage he did too. That was Yeah, bad. that's like Bad Lieutenant or something. Yeah, uh, bad like that. that's bad, bad lieutenant, that one. <laughs> um Yeah, there's quite a few that are just no good, really. I mean, he's got all the technology and stuff in the world, but uh, it it doesn't make the movies any better. Well, I mean, when you make 74 movies... I guess you're going to have some bad ones. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, there's going to be a few. 
how old is he too? Is he not dead yet? No, he's uh, he's acting and everything now. Oh, that's true. He was just in The Mandalorian. Yeah, he's one of those guys. And uh, what was he? he was in a Tom Cruise movie not too long ago. Jack Reacher, I think it's called. Yeah, you're right. He was the bad guy in that one. That's fun. I think his uh, he said his life's goal was to be the bad guy in a James Bond movie. Really? We'll see if that happens. Or like his acting goal, his yeah, aspirations yeah. as an actor are to be the bad German guy in a James Bond movie. Well, he's uh, he's 77 years old. Oh, younger than I thought. Yeah, me too, to be honest. I was expecting him to be in his 80s. Yeah. But he's still... he's pretty close. Yeah, he's still kicking. He's still shooting out documentary after documentary. Yeah, so he, he's 20 years younger than Kinski. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. So imagine having some fucking kid pointing a gun at you from behind the camera telling you what to do in the jungle. Yeah, and you're 45. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> fuck this guy. <laughs> fucking funny. Was, uh... Gary isn't Herzog's first movie. It's just their first movie together. Yeah, their first... I think it's his fifth movie or fourth or fifth movie, but third fe- uh, third fiction. Okay, yeah. So Herzog was... 30 when he made uh a gary yeah so pretty pretty fresh to uh filmmaking i think his first movie was only like three or so years prior yeah he says uh he was 19 when he made his first movie oh okay never mind then in 61 so it was almost a decade before mm. but uh this is kind of when the like those early movies they they're more like they look like student movies, kind of 16 millimeter cut together kind of thing. Okay. But this is a good, solid feature. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I'm, uh, I'm just wondering, uh, I think like the reviews and stuff for a movie like this, I, I imagine there'd be a lot of fanboys and stuff. The majority, it's got a 4.1. Okay. The uh, most common score is four stars, and after that is five stars. So I think you're right about that. Yeah, so I don't think we're going to get very objective or kind of, uh, you know, true reviews. Yeah. I mean, there are 51 star reviews. Yeah, there might be some fun ones. It's probably going to be Shall we? Boring, I don't get it, uh, something like that. You want to jump into reviews? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not getting any warning on my side for Zoom, but I think we've been talking for an hour already. Yeah, we have. Oh, fuck it. Do you have anything else about uh, movie analysis or anything? Um, not much more, I guess. Really, all I took from this uh, was that it is pretty, and then it gets boring, and then it gets pretty again. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Feels like Heart of Darkness. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the the documentary, like the documentary film style and the spontaneity of the set yeah. and all that, it it lends really well to the the whole like transporting the viewer into the world of the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I pretty much uh, exhausted my notes. Rock and roll, then. Let's head on to these uh, these reviews. Okay, half star. Okay. A bunch of people having a bad time on a boat, and then some monkeys show up. That's it. I mean, it's not a bad review. <laughs> it is what happens. <laughs> that that should have been the tagline. A bunch of monkeys show up. <laughs> Wait till the hour 20 mark when a bunch of monkeys show up. <laughs> just skip. Just skip to the monkeys. Do yourself a favor. Those monkeys rule, though. Do you see in the background of that shot, you can see some little heads bobbing as they swim away in the background? Yes, that was hilarious. That is fun. All trying to get away. Uh, this Kinski guy's a lunatic. <laughs> okay, this is a good one. And by good one, I mean one that we can make fun of. Okay. <laughs> Pretentious, mm-hmm. sympathetic to colonialism, and destructive for destruction's sake. This film is at best a distasteful representation of a director who uses the art of filmmaking as a justification for his narcissistic and at times repulsive tendencies. Yeah, these are the kind of 
reviews that Herzog gets in these kind of, that's kind of what we're talking about. Like, are you doing it just to kind of showboat or is there a purpose for it? That's kind yeah. of, I mean, we've been over it with this stuff. I mean, I think pretentious is a reach because he's not, he's not claiming to be more than he is. He's not pretending to be more than he is. He's just making a fucking movie in the jungle. Yeah. And sympathetic to colonialism. I think this movie gives a pretty realistic and harsh view of what colonialism was probably like. Mm -hmm. Well, they're just call that sympathetic is kind of the opposite of, I think what Herzog went for. They're just killing Indians and stuff. We have 200 Indian slaves that are dying every day and stuff, and they're not bothered about anything. They just want to take over and get all the gold. Uh, I don't think it's very sympathetic to anything. Yeah, me neither. Destructive for destruction's sake. I mean, it's not like Herzog planned the flood. No. And it wasn't his fault. They might be talking about uh, there's a, a tree that falls down in the at the beginning. But I mean... It's a <laughs> That's it? That's all you got? There's a lot of fucking trees in that jungle. <laughs> At best, a distasteful representation of a director who's his filmmaking. Yeah, that we covered. Yeah. That, uh... And that's a critique that he's had forever, though. Yeah. Yeah. Because, but I mean, he's got documentaries about, like, kids who are blind and deaf and can't feel things, and they're going kind of crazy, and it's about their kind of story and stuff. But people go, oh, he's kind of, he's using them as just to get his movie, and, like, all that stuff is so stupid. He, he's trying to... He's doing a documentary on people who are blind and deaf. He's not using the people, you know? Yeah. Same thing in a movie like this. I mean, those all the actors in it are paid, fuck. They know what they're yeah. signing up for. I mean, uh, except for Kinski, it, it sounds like anyone else could have left. Yeah, for, I think Kinski was gunpoint. He's not allowed to leave. <laughs> yeah, he was stuck. <laughs> But I mean, all the all the natives who are in the movie, they're all paid. They're not fucking guys who just showed up and said, hey, run in here and I'm going to slap you a bit and fall in the mud. You know, these guys are <laughs> paid actors. And maybe the documentary aesthetic is taking people thinking it really is some kind of... It is quite... Run. Yeah, it is quite jarring. Mm. But regardless, it is still a movie and still fiction. Yeah. A lot of monkey jokes. The only part I liked were the monkeys. The only part I liked were the monkeys. Mm. They're the, the best part. Well, the pan flute guy and the monkeys are the best part. <laughs> the pan flute guy is definitely awesome. Yeah, I like that guy. <laughs> a lot of these people are saying, like, what, this is the dude who was in Mandalorian? That's pretty funny. Like, they don't know who Herzog is. They just know yeah. about Star Wars. That's awesome. <laughs> I love that you don't see a guy who's make, he's made 100 movies in the past 50 years. Do you know him from fucking three episodes of some dumb <laughs> Disney show, you know? <laughs> this is a good one. He gave it one star. So mundane that I watched it in double speed and it was still a slog. Plus this motherfucker threw monkeys and that's just not okay. Eh, this guy's a nerd. Fucking, okay, how did it, I don't know. He didn't like, it's not like he spiked a monkey like a football. But the guy wasn't worried about the two chickens who clearly fell to their death on camera. He was scared about <laughs> you that you toss into a lake or into a river. I mean, <laughs> abandoned in the jungle. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, it's only the monkeys because they look like us. I guess so. The guy's uh, not the German. German. Pardon? Bananas got massacred on camera, and the guy doesn't care. <laughs> Wish I was this. Was there? There's this. There's a. There's a lot of German reviews. Okay. Some of them I can't quite decipher. This one, I think my German's good enough to read. Mm -hmm. This movie gave me cancer. <laughs> one star. Well, I mean, if that if it's actually the movie's fault, give it one star. Fine. <laughs> if you genuinely got retinal cancer from watching this movie, then you can give it one star. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, is it safe to say that Herzog is like a director's director? Pretty well. I don't think he's very liked generally by like general audience kind of thing. He's yeah. like an art house kind of director. 
this guy said it feels like one of those educational films they would play for us in class that was historically accurate, low budget, and insanely boring. Plus, they would make you do a packet that forces you to pay attention and endure the entire thing. Well, I mean, if they're, well, fucking in class, they're showing you Herzog movies, I wouldn't mind taking the packet. Yeah, I was going to say, dude, if this is the shit they showed you in history class, fuck, I wish. That's pretty cool. I was watching some fucking uh, Tom Hanks movie where he's stuck in an airport or some shit. What? I don't know. It's some movie watched in high school history. <laughs> <laughs> is that uh, Catch Me If You Can with Leonardo DiCaprio? It, no, but it was uh, Steven Spielberg, too, I think. Or no, uh, his buddy there with a Z in his name who did Back to the Future. I don't know. Hans? Something like that. Some crap movie. Klaus Kinski is a fucking weirdo. One star. I mean, that'd be five stars for me. <laughs> yeah, that, I don't know how that's a problem. I mean, you find a guy that weird to be the main character, you should get a tap on the back at least. A lot of people are calling him pretentious. I don't think... They quite know what that means. Hmm. They say he's pretending to be smart or something, or yeah. Well, pre- that's exactly what pretentious implies. Yeah, but I mean, it doesn't seem like there's any dialogue that's out of bounds in the the vocabulary that they're supposed to be using in the time period. Yeah, no, because pretentious is inherently hypocritical. Yeah kind of funny how when you use the word pretentious incorrectly it makes you pretentious <laughs> that is fun isn't it nice little word play there nice little fun with words oh we're having fun Lee. <laughs> <laughs> all right this film is not a film it's a reputation that stands in for one one of the most pretentious boring films i've ever had to force myself to sit through naysayers may say that's part of its aesthetic but even artsy films that have a shtick have to have something enticing about that shtick. This film says more about the university professors who laud it and the institution of cinema itself than its actual subject. It's like a film that everyone secretly hates but is forced to say they like to others. Well, I don't think that's true at all in any sense, what the guy was talking about. He's talking about university professors lauding it. Every university teacher or college teacher either doesn't know the movie, hasn't seen it, doesn't like Herzog, or goes, ah, it's, uh, I don't know, not my kind of movie. And what what else was the thing? that The aesthetic is being slow, like an art movie that needs a shtick or something? Yeah. Well, I mean, the, 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 the shtick is, uh, I don't know, like the, the aesthetic wouldn't be surrounding the shtick. The aesthetic would be surrounding the look and feel of the movie. So like the, the a gimmick in the movie has nothing to do with the aesthetics of the movie. Yeah. And I, I don't think you need a gimmick in an art movie or an art house movie to make it uh, enjoyable. Like I, I just think that I don't know. He's not the right audience. Whoever, whoever wrote this. Review. Yeah, I would agree with that as well. Because he he mentions it not being enticing enough. I mean, yeah, it's slow. At parts, it is even boring. Mm. But I was never not involved i was never not captured by the movie yeah but i mean that's probably probably somebody who's running home to watch the latest marvel uh masturbation so yeah probably let's check let's see what this guy likes yeah let's see what this fucker likes let's sort his movies by his highest rating oh the blair rich project is his top movie. Okay, so he likes Boogers. The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Okay, so he likes silent movies that are uh, referenced now to be cool. The original Planet of the Apes. The guy's an asshole. (laughs) And that's it. He's only reviewed like seven movies. Yeah. He's only seen 57 movies. Okay, well, this guy's fucking sucks. (laughs) (laughs) No Marvel movies, though, so it looks like you're wrong. Yeah, Blair Witch and fucking Planet of the Apes. Put those together and you get Ant-Man. It's close enough. That's true. Um, (laughs) I mean, you know how much I like horror movies. Yeah. 
the Blair Witch Project fucking sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care who says otherwise. I don't care how influential it was. That movie is dog shit. But what's this guy talking about gimmicks? That's the most gimmicky movie ever. That the It's fucking two hours of a, one gimmick. The gimmick is that this is a real found thing we found. And that's the whole movie. <laughs> and fucking Planet of the Apes is we got guys dressed in monkey suits. That's the gimmick. Fuck. What does this guy know about gimmicks? This guy's gimmicking me a headache. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any good ones? Or I think the good ones are going to be ba- as bad as the bad ones. I think I think so too. I think they're just going to be a bunch of fucking retards, fucking blowing hurt thug. Yeah, I think so as well. Do you want to go to our uh, personal reviews then? This seemed like it flew by. I can't believe the time already. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay with that. Let's skip. Let's skip the five stars. Fuck them. What do you think, Lee? Um, damn, out of ten, it's tough. Mm. Do you remember what I gave? Uh. What was his other movie we did? Strochek? Uh, yeah. We and did Heart of Glass? Strochek, I think you gave it a 7 and I gave it an 8 or something. And then uh, Heart of Glass, I think we both gave 10s. Yeah, Heart of Glass I did really like. Yeah. Um, I think I'd give this a 7. That's fair. Yeah, it's um, it's good. I like the, I appreciate the Heart of Darkness stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, Aesthetically, it's beautiful. The fucking, just for the opening sequence alone. Yeah. And then all the river shots are nice. Mm -hmm. Um, I think actually knowing the behind the scenes stuff kind of increases it. I think if I didn't know all that stuff, I would have given it like a five or a six. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but it kind of makes me appreciate the movie more. It's fun, though. It's fun having the background stuff. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. I also like the parallel between the Gary and Herzog. Mm-hmm. I appreciate that. And the kind of Kinski Herzog. They're the same kind of person, but on playing different yeah. roles. Like, Yeah, exactly. Uh, I agree with you, though. The beginning's good, the end's good, and the middle's completely boring. Um, I'm going to jump on, on uh, the bandwagon. I'm going to give it a seven also. Hey, there you go. Fair enough. Good little seven all the way through. For a third feature, pretty good yeah fun enough yeah i mean yeah it's it's interesting how uh like saturated herzog style is so early yeah he really found his uh his technique pretty early on right away yeah yeah and that's what we've been uh, exploring through this little Herzog playlist. Have you uh, have you found that they uh, everything is pretty well where it's supposed to be in line with the Herzog uh, ideology? What do you mean? Kind of a uh, run and gun feel to a documentary feeling of it, but still kind of uh, crafted, but almost like the uh, the art of the crafting feels like almost unfinished or it's in the process of still being crafted. Yeah, I think um, interestingly enough so far, even though this is his first major film, Mm -hmm. this feels like Herzog at his most Herzog. (laughs) Yeah, I agree with you there. Yeah, This is, his peak was almost like 70 to 80. Everything before that is kind of like student he feels and everything after that feels almost like he's playing on himself like there's a few bangers in there but he also did a lot of tv documentaries and tv movies and stuff that are just bad yeah boring long slow things but uh when he when he gets the magic going it, it's good i think this this one has a bit of the, the herzog magic Oh, it's fucking, it's flooding with Herzog magic. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> that was a fun podcast. Fair enough, 7 on 10. Uh, do you uh, have any plans for uh, what's up next or something? Um, I don't know. What have you been, what are you, what are you feeling? 
I'm, uh, I don't want to speak for uh, you or for the, the podcast or anything, but uh, we can tease the, the listeners a bit and our, ourselves. I have a little, uh, I made that spreadsheet before with, uh, I think I put 10 or 12 of uh, suggestions for myself on there. And there's a big blank column for you to throw in your uh, 10 or 12 uh, things. And I think we can bounce back and forth from there. Okay. So we, we got stuff coming up at least. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, potential guests as well who have been suggesting movies for us. Oh, that's awesome. Good time to do it now in uh, quarantine when everyone's fucking behind their computer doing nothing. Yeah, for real. So, uh, look forward to some fun guests then? Yeah. Yes. The usual guests will definitely be returning. We'll have some new guests. Yeah. We can have the, the return of Halen after three years. Oh. Three years waiting. Maybe. Probably not, but maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, good talking to Lele. I guess you can uh, check us out at the, the usual places. Yes. You can email us, monolithfilmclub at gmail.com. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, monolith film pod is our handle uh you can find nick and i's personal accounts on instagram uh through the monolith one i have to say the uh when you look at the monolith podcast on uh podcast app on the apple app looks fantastic oh does it looks really great each one has its own thumbnail it has the different seasons and the big picture with the description uh looks very tight hey there you go um, leave a review if you watch. Review us. Mm-hmm. I think it helps with the algorithm, helps us get discovered. Yeah, thumbs up and comment, please. Yeah. Tell us everything. Engage good. with our content. Yes, please. And, uh, well, until, well, while you do that, we'll watch some more movies and we'll see you next time. Until next week. Goodbye.